This is the Lock Picking Lawyer, and what I have for you today is the Vero Totem Lock and Chain Combination. It's the model 4150. This package comes with a 10 millimeter thick hardened square link chain in either 90, 120, or 150 centimeter lengths, as well as a very unique padlock that's specifically designed for securing two ends of a chain. Also with this package, we get a pretty hefty nylon drawstring sack for stowing the chain and lock when they're not in use. Now, according to Vero, this package is, quote, particularly suitable for locking any types of scooters or motorcycles, especially higher powered ones. I'm not sure that's a statement I agree with. When it comes to scooters or motorcycles, when you can carry a little bit more weight around, I'm not sure I see 10 millimeters as an adequate chain thickness. That goes doubly for the higher powered motorcycles, which have a greater monetary value and therefore attract more sophisticated thieves. However, 10 millimeters is probably a good compromise for lugging a chain around on the back of a bicycle, so that's probably how I see this package. So, let's take a look at how this lock works because it's a really unusual lock. Now this is a cylindrical shutter style lock with two slots, one for each end of the chain. The whole thing is made out of hardened steel and underneath this dust cover, we have a pretty thick spinner that guards the keyway. If we open this up, you can see that only one end of the chain releases. And I see that as a very good feature because it makes the whole thing a lot less cumbersome to use. To release the other end of the chain, this needs to be unlocked and then you need to push a little button that's in that tiny little hole. We'll do that later when I completely disassemble it, but first, let's see what it takes to pick this open. We have a five pin, standard pin tumbler lock in here. If we look carefully down there, you can see we have a pretty tight reverse Yale style keyway. I'm going to tension that on the top with a 40 thousandths thick wiper insert. And I'm going to use a standard hook in 18 thousandths. Nothing on one, nothing on two. Little click on three, little click on four, nothing on five. Back to the beginning, nothing on one, two, okay, three, I might have missed something before. There we go. Dropped into a false set, counter rotation on four, and I think we got four set, five, there we go. Got to click out of him, definitely drop something though. Nothing on one, two, let's see, three, got a little click out of him, drop back into our false set, counter rotation on four again. Not sure if I got four set. Let's just move on, nothing on five. Okay, back to the beginning, click out of one, dropped into a pretty deep false set, nothing else there. Click out of two, three, counter rotation, still in our false set. Nothing on four or five. Back to the beginning, counter rotation on one, looks like we got it open. Okay, so while it is certainly not a trivial lock to open, I think it's still definitely on the easier end of the spectrum when it comes to motorcycle lock pick resistance. In any case, let's take this apart and see what's inside. Now to remove this second part of the chain, I need to get a little wire, and when this is unlocked, I need to push down that little hole, and that releases the whole cylinder. With that comes the bolt, and you can release the entire chain. Okay. Let's see what we have to do. If we push this button in, and this is in the unlocked position, I believe we can start to slide this sleeve out. Let me see if I can find where the pins are. There we go. Okay, there's our little button. And we 
get a pair of tweezers and start removing everything here. So our spring from number one, two, three, come on, there we go, four and five. This is still in the unlocked position, so I should only be dropping driver pins out now. A spool in one, spool in two, spool in three, spool in four, and spool in five. Let's turn that core to the to the position where it is locked, and that should allow us to remove the key pins. Standard in one, standard in two, standard in three, there we go, standard in four, standard in five. And it looks like the only way to get that core completely out is to remove a blind pin there. I think that goes the same for this ball bearing. However, as far as the locking mechanism goes, you can see the ball bearing which turns, which is cammed by the core itself. You can actually see it right on the side there. There we go. Okay, so Actually a fair bit of pick resistance for a five pin standard pin tumbler lock. However, for a motorcycle lock, I'm really not sure I see this as being up to the challenge. Let me give you a close up of all of this. Okay, for our key pins, they are all standard. And for our driver pins, they are all spools. We have a bunch of short little springs and if we move over to the core, you can see a reasonably tight reverse Yale style keyway. We have a small pin in what I guess we'll call slot six. That both retains the core and also keeps it from over rotating. We have the ball bearing, which is actuated by the little cammed out portion of the core. And then we have a dovetail there which is what holds the shackle in place. So a really interesting lock with a really interesting mechanism. That's all I have for you on this Vero Totem lock and chain combination, model 4150. If you have any questions or comments about it, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.